the voices and the keyboard you will never change you are the lord you are the lord you are the lord yeah. you remain the same you will never never change reasons why people suffer financial hardships why people are poor why families suffer lack of financial resources i have seven of them here number one lack of understanding of kingdom laws and principles lack of understanding of kingdom laws and principles lack of understanding when your understanding is deficient about the laws and principles of the kingdom that make for financial abundance it could be a reason for why you will suffer some untold financial hardships last year we did a series on prosperity i believe last year kingdom prosperity and when we were talking about the principles we examined according to scripture that the, those principles are categorized into two that there are spiritual principles and there are earthly or natural principles a combination of both is what we call kingdom principles that the spiritual principles are what make for the availability of the resources for instance one of those principles has to do with favor and then the natural or the earthly principles are the principles that make for not the availability but for the sustenance and the multiplication of the resources so receiving it is one thing multiplying it is, an, is another and even sustaining it knowing the laws is one thing knowing how it works is another thing if for instance i ask somebody here now what is the secret or the secret that the bible gives us to enjoying kingdom prosperity somebody can say giving yes that is one of the secrets but how what kind of giving will make for coming into financial abundance coming into financial prosperity the how usually is, is the problem brothers and sisters one of the major reasons why people suffer from financial hardship is lack of understanding of kingdom laws and principles number two ignorance or incomplete knowledge knowledge is information acquired understanding is comprehension received it is one thing to acquire the knowledge is another thing to understand it for some they don't even have the knowledge he said my people perish for what lack of knowledge not lack of understanding not lack of prayer my people perish why their knowledge capacity is deficit sometimes you need to ask yourself as touching the operations of the kingdom in your life what is the extent or sufficiency of knowledge that you have ignorance is bearable incomplete knowledge is the worst ignorance is that you don't know at all incomplete knowledge is that what you know but what you know is not sufficient jesus said be careful that the light in you is not darkness otherwise it will be what great darkness so many believers their knowledge bank is incomplete and if it is incomplete it means remember we said the financial systems are a combination of forces forces that you engage together so when the forces or the principles that you know are not complete you are going to mix up a wrong formula and you keep engaging and discovering that you are, you, are, you, are, you are getting the wrong results. 
Somebody said it is foolishness to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I'm telling you the truth. In fact, I believe that the body of Christ, we need, one, we need to really contend for the place of knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. Every operation of the Spirit of God in your life, you must have sufficient knowledge bank of it. Sufficient understanding. What you know is not enough. There is more. And you know what? Revelation is progressive. In Acts chapter 26, that's what Paul said. That Jesus appeared to him and told him that you will be a witness unto me of the things that I've shown you and the things that I will show you. So what you know yesterday may have gotten a level of resolve for you. But is that sufficient enough for today's problem? Let's go on. Number three. Reasons why people suffer financial hardships. Number three. Unbridled desires. There are a lot of people that their desires have is, is the reason for why they are now perpetually poor. Uncontrolled desires. How can you have desires that rule over you? God gave man dominion over all things, including the desire that he has. That's why the Bible in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, pursue love, but desire spiritual gifts. Some other people, they have desire for wearing good clothes. It's a good thing to wear clothes so you're not naked but when that desire is not properly checked that person is now under an uncommon kind of pressure dressing to impress buying clothes that you have not paid for which will lead us to the fourth thing the fourth reason unbridled desire there are other terrible desires even gambling For the young men, their own is that one. For the elderly men, their own is pool. You know pool? You don't know pool? May God help you in Jesus' name. Oh. May you not know pool. I'm telling you. You see, you, see, you see a fully grown man, married with children. Early in the morning, he's standing where there's a green and red symbol waiting for them. Number four, debt. Debt is one of the reasons why many people, many believers suffer from financial hardships. Debt upon debt upon debt upon debt. House rent, school fees, now even the food you borrowed money to buy, you have not paid. The keke man that takes you to work every day, you are still owing him. Debt upon debt. And you know, this debt is like a spirit. The more, if you, if it's like, it's like mud. How many of you know mud? If you fall into a mud, the more you try to get out on your own, is the more you are sinking inside. That's how debt is. That's why I say the borrower is slave to the lender. You will always feel that you will need to keep borrowing to meet up. Debt is a very disastrous spirit. In fact, debt is slavery. Because you can't do anything with your money. There are people, some may even be listening to me right now, that for six months they have not spent their salary completely because as it comes there is a measure that is going somewhere they are always owing debt why can't you live within your means you know the truth is one of the answers to content to debt is contentment no matter how small the bible says in first timothy chapter 6 it says, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we will surely take nothing out. It says, for if we have food and clothing, with this we are content. Buying a car that you, don't, you, can, you cannot afford. You have to keep paying for nine months. Okay, now that you have finished paying for nine months, are you still going to borrow again to fuel the car? Number five, laziness. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, ma. Laziness. The unwillingness to take responsibility. The unwillingness to seize opportunities. Laziness. You want everything to be done for you. You are not ready to stand up and take responsibility. Remember, we spoke about dominion. I think there's a place in Proverbs. I read one time. I don't know where it is. He said, A lazy man will not even roast what he brought as meat. He said that the lazy man will say that there is a lion in the street. He can't go out. There's a lion in the street. On Dambwa Road, there's a lion in the street. 
Say, ah, I may do grace too hot. I can't do anything. So he sleeps from morning to evening. Thank God for the heat this season. You can't even sleep. Is it not true? Yeah, no, you will sleep and it will cut your sleep somewhere. Quickly. Number six. Impatience. Impatience. This is another reason why people suffer. Impatience. Unwillingness to wait. Wait. There is something called the law of process. Thank God for the favor of God. It can happen overnight. But before it happens, there is a law of process that you must engage. It takes time to grow. Motivation can come at an instant. But growth takes time. Just because you received a powerful sermon and you feel highly inspired doesn't mean that the results will come immediately. No. Somebody say, eh, but the Bible says the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke. Yes, he set you on your feet to walk. Process. The Bible says because of this impatience, it says many, of, many people have pierced themselves with sorrows. Let me tell you the truth. Genuine and lasting wealth, I have come to believe and I'm convinced it takes time to be built. There is, you, can't take, you can't take me otherwise of that conviction. God will give us grace to be patient. And then number seven, lack of strategic relationships. Lack of strategic relationships. Lack of strategic relationships. Situations in life can happen. Coincidences can happen. Everything that Job had crashed in one day. How did God restore Job? Go and read Job chapter 42. The Bible says his siblings, his friends, they came back and each of them contributed. Relationships. So if, you, if you don't have strong and strategic relationships at, in your life, where if anything should happen and you suddenly grow, go broke, they can help you to stand. Then brother, you need to pray. You need to pray and start walking. In John chapter 5, what, the man that Jesus met at the pool, what did he say? He said, I have no man to take me into. May that not be your story in the name of Jesus. 